Hey everybody, what's going on? We are back talking about a camera that on paper makes no sense to get because it's such a niche camera and it only shoots in two colors, black and white, but it is so fun to shoot with. I'm talking about the Leica M10 Monochrome. Now, I want to thank Leica Singapore for providing the camera and two lenses for us to review. However, we are not paid or sponsored by anyone for this. My thoughts, my thoughts only. So let's talk about the M10 Monochrome. Now, obviously, this is the third uh, version of the Monochrome series. First came out with the M9, then the M246, and of course now the M10 Monochrome. But there's something very different about this camera versus the other two cameras. And while those other cameras were black and white cameras only, they just took out the color out of that. But this sensor has been built up from the ground up without color to get the maximum potential out of this sensor for black and white. And it's a 40 megapixel sensor, so it's higher resolution than the M10, the colored version on the market. And this is Leica's low light king of any camera they've got. At 10,000 ISO, this is just getting warmed up. To kind of go back a little bit, this was the very first type of camera I've shot with when it came to Leica. It was actually the M246 monochrome, and I fell in love with it. The images were super sharp, and I loved just thinking of seeing things in black and white because it's a different way of doing photography. A lot of people, when they, they will convert their pictures after the fact, they shoot in color, they think in color, they see in color, and then they go, oh, it actually looks good in black and white. But when all you have is black and white, you start looking at shadows and shapes and textures. And it really makes it a more challenging, at the same time, more freeing and more creative because the way you just shoot just changes. And sometimes the most mundane thing can look very interesting when you shoot in black and white or something that's very colorful in person. But when you shoot in black and white, then you see all the different hues and tones. It takes a different vibe and a different feel together. The nice thing about this M10 Monochrome is it actually has all the same assets as the M10P. So it has the quietest shutter of all the Leica M cameras. So I can shoot people, they don't even know I'm shooting them. And it's so discreet because it's got this stealth black look to it. The text on this camera is all blacked out. This is a stealth camera through and through. Now, I, am, I have two lenses with me for this review. I have the 35 1.4, which is a black lens. And then I was very fortunate to get the 50 Oppo, which is the silver lens that it's attached to the camera. It gives you the panda look. Now, I will tell you this, the 50 Oppo paired with this monochrome is amazing. Now, the 50 Oppo, some people say, is the best manual 50 lens on the market. I would happen to agree with them. It is breathtaking to shoot with. It is bitingly sharp in such a small package. Uh, this is Leica engineering at its best. And when you're using a very unique sensor, what Leica's put into the M10 monochrome, those paired together, you're gonna get a lot of great texture to your images. You're gonna get a lot of fine details in the micro contrast that comes out that it just makes it a joy to zoom in and just pixel peep, because go ahead and do it. You're gonna pixel peep for days and go, wow, I really can pull a lot out of this image. Now the 35 1.4 is also a very nice lens, but there is something to be said about the older M lenses used on a higher resolution sensor. And this is something I noticed when I shot with the SL2 is that some of these older lenses, they have a very unique look to them, but they can't resolve the higher resolution sensors like the Oppo can and some of the newer, like the 91.5 or the 75 1.25 Noctilux. So there has been talks of Leica that are gonna bring, probably bring out a future version of the M lenses, like the 35 1.4, the 50 1.4, 35 F2, 50 F2, non-Oppo, and bring them up to a more modern uh, version, uh, rendition, you could, I guess you could say, that will resolve those higher megapixel sensors. Because look, if they're doing this with the M10 monochrome, you know there's gonna probably be an M11 or an M10X or whatever it could be high resolution version. I'm just creating names at this point in time. But you know that's gonna happen. So they need the lenses to complement that. Having said that though, the 35 1.4 looks beautiful on this. It just gives it much more of a classic look where the 50 Oppo gives it a much more modern rendering to your images. So to each their own. Anyway, let's walk around Tiangbaru a little bit. Let's gonna shoot some things, some walls, some textures, some doors, and just capture this old vibe that Tiangbaru has. And, uh, See what it's like to shoot with the M10 monochrome. Oh, has a has history, a story to it. No, just looks good in black and white. Okay. So let's talk about the visual flex on the M10. Now you see that I'm shooting a lot with this, and I'm shooting from the waist level. And the reason is, is that I do find that 
there gives a lot more flexibility to the M series when you do this. Now, yes, the traditional way is using the optical viewfinder, and I do that as well, but just to shoot a shot like that, it takes it, it's more difficult, especially when you've got a backpack with a lot of lenses and cameras and stuff going on in there. So it is easier for me just to like, just frame my shot like this and shoot. But you know, this brings us to another question. Is it time for a Leica M with an EVF? I mean, our eyes don't get better as we get older. Just something to throw out there like, in case you're watching M10 or M11, monochrome or color, EVF. I think that would sell pretty damn well. Now you saw some of those images that I've taken in previous locations outside of Tongue Baru and also here, but we're going to go to Lightroom now. And I want to show you about the dynamic range and about the noise and how it handles low light because that's what makes this sensor and this camera very, very unique. This is a low light beast. And one thing that I realized about this is you don't need to have the fastest lens anymore to combat that ISO because you could shoot at 25,000 ISO and you get a great film-esque look to your image that if you don't have the means to afford a 50 f2 oppo or a 35 1 4 you can get a zoomer you can get a less expensive m mount lens or like a lens that could maybe a slower aperture but still get great shots out of it because the iso performance is that good anyway let's go to lightroom and let's take a look at some of these images in the dynamic range and how they handle in post Okay, so now I'm into Lightroom and I wanted to show you how the monochrome files played in Lightroom. Now, of course, Capture One will be different. Originally, when the M10 monochrome first came out, there was a much flatter profile to the images. They almost look gray and whites and a little bit muddy. Since then, Adobe has come up with an update that gives a little bit more contrast, a little bit more punch naturally to the images. I preferred the previous because it allowed me a lot more latitude in my editing. But just to kind of talk a little bit about, about how much information you can retain in these images. This is the original image of my dog. I shot against backlight because I wanted to see how much I could pull out from the background with the, the highlights and the shadows. So as I want to bring down the, the highlights here, you can see the curtains are starting to come into play here. But if we look closer, there's a lot of black here. It's really underexposed. But if I was to push the shadows up all the way, now this is a very high dynamic image, I probably wouldn't edit this way, but just to kind of show you, for example, see how much detail I have in here. See the fur, see the eyeball, um, even a little bit of eye gunk there. The detail that's retained, now this is at an ISO 160, and I was a little bit far away with her, but look at that. Still a very usable image. Of course, I would you know tweak it a little bit, but just to show you how much information is retained in these files, and it is still a sharp image. Very, very impressive. Next, I want to show you an image of uh, my friend Alan. Now, this is the portrait I shot. Now, it's not 100% in focus, but I just want to again show you how it looked from how I shot it to after I edited it. Now, this is a little bit more gritty, but you can see how much information I retained in this. So, it really looks good. I have to say I'm really impressed with the overall image that's coming out of this camera, especially um, in terms of just the highlights and the shadows. Now let's talk about ISO performance. Now this image, for a lot of cameras, you think maybe this is ISO 1600 or maybe 2000 or 4000. No, this is ISO 25,000. And just to kind of show you the information I can retain in this, this has much more grain inside of it, but still a lot of detail around these boxes here. And I was shooting outside of a stairwell, so this was not up close. I was still a little bit of ways away. And still quite amazing the information that I have retained here at ISO 25,000. It almost gives you more of a Tri-X kind of film vibe to it. Just goes to show you how good this camera is in low light. So overall thoughts on the M10 monochrome. I know I'm gonna probably get a little crap for this, but this is Leica's best M camera to date for digital. Uh, this hits all the notes you want to hit. Great low light performance. It's quiet, looks the business. I love the stealth black look. I know we're not supposed to say this is the M to get because it's black and white only. And if you look at the numbers, logically it doesn't make sense. But that's not what this camera is about. It's about the process, about the joy of photography. It's about shooting and just enjoying going out on the streets and just shooting images and people and subjects. And 
and bringing you back to the basics. And that's what it does. And it does it so well. As you can tell, I kind of like the M10 model. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the camera. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Like always, follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. If you have any questions you want to ask me personally, hit me up on Instagram. Until the next one, take care.